now i find that other honorable members who do not happen to be lawyers keep on advancing such attractive arguments that we get charmed and we keep on listening and particularly when those honorable members happen to be lady members and they make such beautiful speeches then the house goes on and on and half an hour discussion may become half a month discussion so what i was saying was i got these figures worked out and i found that by applying this yardstick of 650 cases per judge the following is the requirement we know that in these high courts so many cases were instituted in 1986 therefore if you apply the yardstick of 650 what would be the normal strength which would be able to cope with as many cases which are being instituted every day as would get disposed of the same day so that arrears would not go on increasing in fact there would be a decrease in the arrears then what would be the strength and what would be the strength when the arrears go on decreasing i found you need extra strength for all these all this by working out at 650 cases per judge take for instance the karnataka high court the sanctioned strength is 220 14 permanent and 3 additional the total sanctioned strength is 17 para and i find that by applying this yardstick of 650 cases per judge the number of cases which were instituted in the high court in 1986 would require 33 judges whether they are permanent or additional that does not make any difference because that is only a matter of approach otherwise they dispose of the same quantity of work so a strength of 33 judges would be required to keep pace with the institutions every day if you want to liquidate the arrears first of all the strength of 17 must be raised to 33 moreover you will have to have some extra strength in order to clear the backlog it is a question of calculation how many judges you should have for how many years in order to clear the backlog by which time that the backlog would be cleared for clearing the backlog some extra strength would be required and now it is true that before the constitution was enacted most of the high courts except some did not have this very useful writ jurisdiction at that time whatever the government did was final because so many acts were passed with the result right or wrong whatever the government did or said became final okay thanks